mind and I'm confident that our domestic operations will continue to flourish in the future. One of the highlights of this quarter is the successful launch of our new product line under the brand Oradop. The overwhelming response from our distributors, customers, and stakeholders worldwide indicates a promising future for this brand, which will undoubtedly boost our top line growth in the coming months. Additionally, our venture into the disinfectant segment is progressing well. With our products in the pre launch phase, we are currently conducting product evaluation and clinical trials in various institutions to validate the product quality. We anticipate that this segment will contribute significantly to our top line in the coming period. Now let me share some insights into the dental industry landscape. The global oral care market in terms of revenue is estimated to be worth $47.2 billion and it is poised to reach to $54.9 billion in 2026, growing at a CAGR of 3.1% from 21, uh, 2021 to 2026. Whereas the India's oral care market is expected to grow at a CAGR of 9.2%, from 2022 to 2029-30, uh, reaching $1,295 million by 2020-30. The market is segmented by toothpaste, mouthwashes, and other oral hygiene products. The growing awareness of oral hygiene and dental health is driving demand for oral care products in India. The increasing urbanization of India with a per capita income increasing from $1,617 in 2010 to $2,020 in 2020 is also driving demand for premium oral care products. The dental 3D printing global market is estimated to be worth USD $2.9 billion in 2023 and is expected to grow at an annualized growth rate of 15.1% from the year 2023 to 2035. In Indian, dental 3D printing materials market is expected to reach 9.88 million by 2033. This market is driven by the increasing prevalence of dental diseases and demand for high-quality dental products. 3D printing offers more treatment choice, cost-effective methods and customization options for the patients and clinicians. The global antiseptic and disinfectant market is estimated at USD 35 billion in 2021 and is anticipated to reach around $63 billion by 2030, growing at a CAGR of roughly 10% between 2022 and 2030. We are fully ready to enter these growing segments of dental industry and see a bright future for our company in terms of business growth. We continue to face headwinds from the currency exchange fluctuation shortage of foreign exchange in some of our major markets. However, I'm happy to share that these challenges are gradually easing and we anticipate renewed business growth in these regions in the coming period. Rest assured, we remain deeply committed to maximizing value for all of our stakeholders. We are taking every possible step to enhance operational efficiency, drive profitable growth, and create long-term shareholder value. We are confident in our future prospects and remain committed to our strategic priorities, such as expanding our product portfolio and market reach, investing in innovation and R&D to drive future growth, 
strengthening our operational efficiency and cost management, enhancing our brand presence and customer relationships. We believe that by staying focused on these priorities, we will continue to deliver sustainable value for our stakeholders and achieve our long-term vision. Thank you so much. And now this is Namaste Modi will share financial performance for the nine months of financial year 24. Over to this is Namaste. Thank you, Mr. Modi. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today to discuss previous Central Limited financial results for the nine months of the fiscal year 2022. I am pleased to share with you that our company has shown growth with the top line increasing by 11.7% from 3,778 lakhs to 4,221 lakhs compared to the nine months of the previous year. Moreover, our profits after tax has experienced a growth of 8.09% during the same period. Our EBITDA for the nine months of the financial year 2024 stands at 1,597 lakhs with a 1.75% increase from 1,559 lakhs for the same period last year. However, as we navigate through this phase of growth, it is essential to note that our profit margin and debita margin have shown a marginal decrease. This can be attributed to the strategic investment made in launching and promoting our new product range, Urada. Additionally, our participation in both domestic and international dental exhibitions has incurred promotional expenses, aiming to enhance the visibility of our brand. Furthermore, we are actively expanding our team across various departments for existing facility and as well as new facilities, including sales and marketing, research and development, and departments. These strategic hires will ensure that we have the necessary expertise to drive our business forward. In our commitment to self-reliance and cost effectiveness, we are actively working to reduce our dependence on imported raw materials, our house research and development initiatives are geared towards achieving this objective, allowing us to break free from our dealings on, on imported products in the long run. I want to assure our investors that we are uh, directly working towards cost-effective measures and optimal resource utilization. Although there has been a marginal decrease in our margins due to our recent expansion and years, we believe this investment will give substantial return in the long run. As we look ahead, we are confident that our focused approach to cost-effective practices and delicate resource management will result in improved margins in the coming period. We remain committed to maintaining the highest standard of quality while exploring avenues for substantial growth. Thank you for your continued trust and support in Previous Central Limited. We are excited about the future and look forward to sharing our continued success with all other stakeholders. Thank you. Now over to Mr. Wagner. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, and good afternoon, everyone and thank you for joining us today for this investor call. I am pleased to share some exciting developments that have taken place recently at Previa Central Limited. Firstly, I am thrilled to announce the successful launch of our new oral care brand, Oradox. This consumer range of products represent a significant growth opportunity for Previa Central Limited, and we are highly optimistic about its potential in the market. The initial phase has yielded an encouraging response from various quarters. We have devised a comprehensive strategy for the launch of Oradox covering both online and offline channels. We have already secured partnerships with three of the biggest online portals and our Oradox range of products are now available on Tata One MD, Amazon and Flipkart in addition to our own portal. Further tie-ups are in progress as we aim to expand our presence across multiple platforms. In line with our commitment to innovation and customer outreach, 
we have taken a bold step by launching our own e-commerce channel Freeware Direct recently. This move has allowed us to engage with our customers directly and has already yielded promising results. Our team is actively promoting our brand through this platform and the initial response has exceeded our expectations, indicating rapid expansion potential, especially in our underdeveloped markets. While, while it's early days for both our online ventures, but we are confident in their scalability based on the initial response. Simultaneously, we have commenced offline distribution of our products, enrolling our dental channel partners in all key markets to leverage our expertise in reaching dentists nationwide. To support the successful promotion of Oradox, we have initiated a strategic hiring process to add more talented individuals to our team across uh, to our to join our sales team across the nation. These individuals will play a crucial role in promoting Oradox and our existing range of products ensure its widespread recognition. I am pleased to inform you that we are on track to complete this hiring process within the next two months. I am pleased to report that our domestic business is performing exceptionally well and we anticipate further growth in the coming period. The positive momentum from the launch of Oradox and the strategic initiatives we have undertaken have positioned us well for continued success in the market. In conclusion, I would like to express my gratitude to our dedicated team whose hard work and commitment have been instrumental in achieving these positive results. We are confident in our ability to capitalize on the opportunities before us and we remain focused on delivering value to all our investors. Thank you once again. Thank you. So should we open for question and answer? Yes, please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Venkatesh from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Mr. Modi, can you please share in the first nine months of the year, what is the con how much of your revenues is coming from India and how much is coming from exports and how much has the India revenues grown YOY and how much has the export revenues grown YOY? That's the first question. Thank you very much. Uh, the export uh, revenue has not grown in this uh, financial year, in the nine months of this financial year. It is flat. We have been able to maintain the same level, but our domestic uh, uh, revenue has grown by 35%. So the split between domestic and export is 60-40. 60% is the export component and 40% is the domestic. So the reason for uh, uh, not performing well in the export market is attributed to the financial crisis in many countries which has, uh, you know, affected, impacted the, uh, you know, export performance. But we have been able to maintain the level, same level, by finding out new avenues, new opportunities, other countries. So we have been able to maintain the same level as it was in the last financial year. Okay. Now, when you talk about financial crisis in many countries, what financial crisis are you talking about? The crisis is basically the non-availability of the foreign exchange with the government. There is no problem with the, the demand. There is no problem with the our customers. They have plenty of funds. But the government in these countries do not have the foreign exchange remittance. You know, they cannot remit the foreign exchange because they have foreign exchange deficit. So they that's why the business is not growing in these countries. So they're just surviving with the minimum requirement. Okay. So which countries are you talking about? Where which countries are you yeah, talking about? We are basically we are talking about the major exporting countries where we were having the uh, best of the uh, business uh, coming. That is uh, Egypt is uh, one of the major countries. 
Peru is another country in South America. Basically, the problem is in African and some of the North, uh, uh, South American countries like Peru, Argentina. And in Africa, we are facing problems from Sudan and Egypt. So these are the four countries which were our major exporting countries. Because of the foreign exchange crisis and uh, you know currency situation, they have not been able to give us sufficient orders. But we have recently met all of them in a, one exhibition which was held in Dubai. So everybody has now is very positive and very op optimistic about the future. And uh, the situation is definitely improving. And we are very confident in the coming time. The business will definitely grow in these countries. These are very high potential countries where we can do extremely good because the popularity of our product is very, very good in these countries. See, the reason I'm asking you this is I remember after your fourth quarter FY23 results, I had asked you what kind of growth you can do in the current year and what kind of margins you can do in the current year. And you had communicated that if you go back in your transcripts and see, you will clearly see that you were expecting 30% revenue growth this year and you were expecting margin similar to last year of 40%. Now, obviously, I can understand the domestic part is doing quite well. In nine months, it has done 35% growth is what you're telling me. But the export business is suffering. Now, uh, and also, I think, uh, call before that, you had even said that in let's four or five years, we can even triple our revenues was a number which you had mentioned. You know, because you are a tiny company, you can definitely grow at those kind of levels. Now, given this new scenario, do you think you can develop your, for example, the North American market more uh, better and maybe the European market better to get back to 30-40% kind of growth levels next year? Or we will continue to be dependent on geographies like South America and Africa, where there is a foreign exchange problem which might persist. It's not necessary it will get solved next year. So any views on that? Definitely, we have uh, you know, explored new countries. And our business in USA has increased to from 0.8% to now it is 2.44%. So we see a lot of opportunities in the U.S. market. And we have also explored new countries where there is a potential so that, you know, we can grow in these countries to compensate for our business, uh, uh, you know, loss in uh, the four countries, you know, which we have just mentioned. So we are also very, you know, conscious of the situation and we are trying our level best to increase our business in the countries where we were not earlier existing. And now we have added new countries from where we have received sufficient and very good orders. That is why in spite of the shortfall from the business in the four major countries, we have been able to maintain the same level by exporting to other countries. So the business in other countries is growing. But because the business has dropped in these four countries, so the net there is no net gain. But once the business in these countries also grows, the overall business will grow. Definitely it will grow because we are very positive. And we are very confident that this is not a permanent uh, situation. The situation will definitely improve. And once the situation improves, the business will grow in these four major countries. And as well as the countries where now we are making all our efforts to grow. So we are very confident that the situation will change and the business will grow in the export market in the coming time. Okay, understood. One last question from my side. Uh, last couple of years, you have increased your capacity also. Is it possible to share what kind of capacity utilization levels you are operating at currently? Currently, we are operating at 40% of our existing capacity because, you know, after capacity utilization uh, expansion, now we are operating at 40% of our capacity. Okay. And utilization can go up to 90%. Is it not? I hope there is no such thing that, you know, there's like a technical issue. You can't, you know, even if you put up a plant, you can't go up above 80% or something like that. No, no. Can you get to 90 95%? 
we still have sufficient capacity and this capacity is currently based on single shift basis but there is always the possibility of going for a second shift if there is a existing if there is a market demand but still you know we are operating at 40% there is a huge capacity available for the business growth okay okay understood thank you all the very best for the future thank you thank you so much thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference please limit your questions to one or two per participant should you have a follow up question we would request you to rejoin the queue our next question is from the line of manan shah from electrum pms please go ahead hi sir am i audible yes please okay. uh, thanks for the opportunity so my first question was regarding our current dealer network what is the number of dealer network and how are you planning to grow it currently in the domestic market we have 60 plus dealers and in the export market we have around 90 dealers so we are uh, you know there are still many countries where we do not have any representation so we are finding out new dealers in both countries where at present we do not have any dealer so that process is going on in the domestic market also we are adding more dealers in those uh, cities currently which are not uh, you know served by our existing dealers so this process will continue appointment of the new dealers in the domestic market as well as in the export market so that is a continuous process so we are trying to find out new dealers whenever and wherever there is a requirement Okay. Uh, my next question is: uh, Currently, we are having around three percent of in- domestic market share. So, do we see ourselves having ten to twenty percent of market share in four to five years down the line? Definitely, we are making all out efforts to increase our market share in the domestic market. So, we see that uh, there is a very good opportunity for us to grow to this level. We will make all efforts to reach to this level. as early as possible sir i am manan's colleague just wanted to just to add here like we have about 20 crore odd sales in the domestic market uh, you know and uh, i think we what we have done our channel checks there is a lot of competition from chinese imports so just want to understand because you know you are trying to uh, grow globally sir, also sorry to interrupt sir may i request you to use your handset sir is echoing slightly sir yeah is it better Yes, sir. Thank you. Please yeah, go ahead. Sir, just wanted to understand that you know the domestic market itself is big enough, and your total sales in the domestic market is only about twenty odd crores. So, uh, what what are the exact efforts you are taking that this this market itself becomes bigger, and which also will also help us say from the slowdown in the global markets. And the second, we have, we have got from our channel checks to uh, to the doctors, we have heard that there is a lot of uh, one push based selling which happens in these products uh, uh, especially from the dealer network and second there is of competition of chinese imports so if you can just cover these things uh, uh, it would help it is evident from our results that we have a growth of 35% in the domestic market which is a phenomenal growth we are very happy with this kind of growth in the nine months and we are very confident that this growth will continue further with our uh, the efforts of our marketing team and with the high quality of product which we are manufacturing in our factory as far as the competition from china is concerned we do not consider chinese product as our competitor because the chinese products are not of very good quality they are definitely very cheap but the dentists do not uh, you know it prefer to use the cheap quality uh, non standard products for the dental treatment because these dental treatment is a health related treatment so dentists will not like to use sub standard and the products which are cheap and not of high quality so the chinese products are definitely existing in the market everywhere not only for the dental products for every product there are chinese competition but for us 
we do not consider Chinese product as our competition. We have a competition mainly from the multinational companies who have a very high brand value. So we consider them as our competitors, not the Chinese companies as our competitors. Okay. And uh, what are we planning? Up, sir, may we request you to rejoin the queue as there are several comments waiting for their turn. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Park Chen from Nevishai Investment Advisory. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So my first question would be on domestic side. So like uh, what we broadly understand is that government recently introduced these MDR regulations which have been helping the domestic producers to increase their share in the overall pie. So can you throw some light on how helpful it has been and how, uh, I mean, how it can help us grow our market further, especially the domestic market. And especially considering my last participant also mentioned that there is immense potential in Indian market itself. So can you throw some light there? Uh, I will uh, request Mr. Weber Munjal to answer this question. Sure. So, uh, sir, to answer your question, uh, the, in the recent regulations, uh, yes, there have been uh, uh, some uh, regulations which have been changed by the government, which have helped, uh, which have been a sort of, uh, so I wouldn't say, uh, it, it has not stopped the other companies, but uh, there have been a hindrance for other companies to come into India. But now, if you look at it, most of those issues are sorted. And almost all the MNC companies have their uh, 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 certifications in place. So what we are, uh, as Mr. Modi rightly pointed out, that we are looking at fighting this competition head-on with our best quality products and improving our range to the most of the markets. So those are the two key things which, are, which we are working on from, uh, for the growth in Indian market. Second important thing, in fact, uh, in the earlier question also it was asked, I would just like to add, for the growth in domestic market, we are not even looking at uh, stopping at one location, right? We are we are looking at growth from our existing set of products, exploring newer markets, and pitching in new products to the markets where we are not reaching. And that is where our online foray and our new uh, team member additions are coming in play. Finally, we are also, in the domestic market, we are also to improve our... Uh, uh, turnover in uh, domestic market, we are also looking at the new range of products. For example, Oradox. Oradox within India, both in online and offline, throws a big uh, opportunity for us. So that will, in the coming few months, it will keep on adding to our overall turnover and overall pie of the business will keep on increasing. So that is the plan going forward for the domestic market. Okay, sir, that helps. Uh, second question would be on this other expenses side. So broadly, if you look at your gross margins, they have increased on a year-on-year -year basis. But what we see is that the particular share of employee benefit and other expenses has offset the increase and instead it has led to reduce EBITDA levels. So uh, if you can help me understand the broad split of other expenses as well as the employee benefit expense, I mean, uh, the, in terms of other expenses, uh, like the broad increase legal and professional and domestic uh, marketing and sales, and in the employee benefit, if you can give the number of employees, how they have increased, vis-a-vis, -vis, what is the percentage increase in the remuneration of existing employees? That will help, sir. Uh, Mr. Vinay uh, Jamal will reply to this question. Good evening, everyone. I reply to your first query is with respect to your increase in expenditures. First of all, our uh, Past our time period is consistent. It has basically improved a little bit as compared to the uh, preceding the corresponding uh, period. And as far as the it, uh, implies benefit cost is concerned, we have uh, our company has joined by a very good marketing team led by Mr. Weber Munjal. And uh, this is one addition. And with respect to the marketing, other people, other people have also joined. We have increased our uh, implied from say 100 to 141. Uh, and mostly uh, this increase in is with respect to marketing team. This is one thing that has led to the increase in implied benefit cost. And in addition to this cost, we have uh, an increase in other expenditures. Uh, like like there is an increase in aggregation expenses since we are uh, exploring new markets world over. So we are going for a uh, 
as many as many as possible number of applications. This is also led to an increase in our other expenditure. We, uh, we have uh, got the consultancy fee, which has a uh, which has increased uh, at least two to two to three times in this current year. And we have got the US FDA. And in in uh, in this case, we have uh, uh, there were increases fees and subscription from say. Uh, which led to an increase of uh, from 6.5 lakh to 25.20 lakh. These are all expenditures which has led to a, a, a little decrease in our uh, EBITDA margin and EVAT. But what we see that the management feels that with this expenditure, the company is going to accrue a lot more sales revenue in the coming uh, quarter, uh, maybe uh, in the, the current quarter and in the succeeding. Uh, uh, future period answer. Thank you. Mr. Jen, may we request you to rejoin the question queue for follow up questions. Our next question is from the line of Avinash Nagata from Parami Financial Services. Please go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, sir, please yes, go ahead. Please. Huh. So I have a few questions. I'll tell them one by one. You may choose to answer the way you want it. So uh, somebody in the call mentioned that uh, we have a market share of some three odd percent, which means at 55 crores, the total uh, share is something around 1600 crores. So uh, one question is, uh, how are the first five players distributed? So uh, the players like you, the top five players, how they are distributed? Second is, uh, you also mentioned that on a one shift basis, you're doing currently 40%. So does this mean if we are doing 100 rupees of business, we can do 400 rupees of business without uh, putting any incremental new investment on a two shift basis uh, at 80% capacity utilization? That's number two. And uh, how much capex we have done in the ortho endo space composites, uh, whatever is the material uh, where we work in the current financial year, and uh, and uh, what are the products you would want to add over the next three four years? That's it from my side. Now, first of all, I will like to reply to your query regarding the capacity utilization. We have a capacity utilization of 40% on single shift basis. So we can go up to 90% capacity utilization on single shift basis. And beyond that, we can go for further capacity utilization by the second shift, introducing another shift. So we have enough capacity for the next five years. So we can easily meet the market requirements for the next five years. Understood. Now the your first yeah. So your uh, other question is the capex. Now we have already invested 24 ER on the capital expenditure for a, for the setting up of the new facility and also for the setting up of the research center. So this capex will definitely develop will be useful in the new in the production of the new project in diversification as well as for the new production activity. And the R&D, uh, CapEx and R&D will help us in the development of the new product, which are already, uh, uh, we have taken up. So with the new product development and uh, the new uh, manufacturing facility, we have sufficient uh, capacity for uh, uh, next five years and sufficient products uh, for marketing in the next four to five years. So definitely we are continuing our, uh, you know, uh, research activities so that we can add some more biomaterial products. And also, as maybe you know that we are uh, developing bone reacting materials, we are also developing oral wound dressing. So there are many products which are under development, and our R&D is working uh, on the development of these products, and once these products are fully developed, and uh, we will take up uh, our commercial uh, production. And the last one on this uh, market share thing, uh, guys like you, top five people would contribute how much out of the 1600 crores? See, uh, we are uh, 
we are the the top five uh, you know companies who are the maximum market share are all multinational companies is our uh, number one is uh, dent supply number two is uh, gc ug is a japanese company cold team and then uh, you know iro clutch these are all five uh, seven companies who are dominating the market in india so we being an indian company we come after them they are all are above us and they have got the maximum market share so within the so there's a follow up so within the indian manufacturers uh, you have the highest market share we have the highest market share among the indian manufacturers thank okay. you thanks a lot thank you so within the just to add to within the india we are the biggest player i mean by means that we are by in terms of turnover uh, or market share perspective we are bigger than any of the other players thank you The next question is from the line of Elizabeth Pereira from Seven Stars Investment Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. I just had a question with regards to our domestic sales. So I just wanted to know whether you'll have a, a breakup of where the sales have been mostly like whether it's from the dealers in the tier one, two cities or from the tier three and four cities. Uh, Mr. Sir, Rajesh, please reply to yeah. this question. So your question, yes, sir. Uh, your question is regarding dealer sale contribution or the growth contribution. Yeah, yeah. So from a domestic sales that we have done, the growth been so has the growth growth been more in the from the dealers in the tier one and two cities or from the smaller towns? So is. the growth has been spread, sir. So, okay, the contribution is obviously higher in the tier one two cities. Okay, so okay. if we talk about the overall sales contribution, but the growth has been led by the rural markets, uh, which are rural. I won't say rural, but tier three and tier four cities. uh to be uh, distinct but parallelly uh, the tier 1 cities also have done decently well so this trend would not be very high between uh, both the markets that way okay okay the reason i asked this question was because uh, usually in tier 1 and tier 2 cities will have like dentists who are a little they have a higher preference towards the international brands so if we shift our focus towards the tier 3 and 4 cities in a big bigger way so i'm sure that can help us yes. much more yes actually work. that is what we are doing uh, if you would have noticed i just mentioned in my speech we have started our e-commerce e- platform also with the delivery across pan india and we just started it that's a first step in terms of increasing our reach uh, to the market that even we are not there first is that second we are also adding dealers in the uh, the smaller markets that is there but having said that sir in tier 1 markets still are a big pie of the business so so we are not leaving that turn uh the proposition which we are playing with our products are the best value for money products right our products are the best certifications our products are certified by all global standards and we offer a price competitive uh, advantage over uh, uh, the any of the mnc so we are making headway in both markets also so both the uh, we are not leaving either of the front uh, unturned we are working on tier we are not leaving tier 1 and parallelly expanding our reach in the tier 2 uh, and tier 3 cities Okay, and my second question is uh, with regards to the main board listing. Because somewhere during the IPO, uh, Mr. Atul had mentioned in an interview that uh, in two years he'll be planning for the migration to the main board. So, any update on that? Yes, we are planning for the next from the next financial year. Okay, so it will be in the next financial. Okay, that's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Darshil Zawedi. From Crown Capital, please go ahead. Uh, hello, uh, good evening, sir. Thank you so much for taking the question. Hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. May we request you to use your handset, sir? Yeah, just just a uh, second. Hello, uh, is this better? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, so sir, just wanted to now get a maybe a broad sense, like you've explained very in depth. You know what all problems in the export markets are we facing. So maybe like if we can say FY24, we faced all the problems that we're supposed to face. What about FY25? How do we look at it? Will our exports uh, fire at the clip that we want them to? You know, will we be able to 
do the previous you know like what our target was 30% revenue growth and 40% margins will that be able to be done in fy25 or what kind of guidance for revenue and margins do we have for fy25 uh, see as far as uh, we uh, uh, understand from the meetings we had with our uh, uh, distributors in the countries where there is a foreign exchange crisis Uh, we understand and we feel that the situation will definitely improve in the next financial year we are seeing good signs in the coming in this quarter that some orders from these countries have already started coming and we are confident that the situation will definitely improve in these countries this uh, foreign exchange crisis will be over it will ease and we will have uh, you know good orders from these countries because our products are very well established in these countries and but we are not solely dependent on these countries we are making efforts to grow our business in other countries and we have also started uh, you know our business in the us has increased to around 4. Uh, about 2.5% and we are making more efforts to go over the in the us because our products are now becoming very popular in us so we are very confident that we will go better in the us market in the next financial year there are some other countries where we have made started making efforts to introduce our products so our business will definitely go in the new countries like you know we have started uh, you know selling in uh, australia also this year and then israel is another country some more countries we have added and uh, you know saudi arabia we have done extremely well in this financial year we are very confident in the next financial year we will have much better business from these countries so that uh, we are very confident you know that with all of our efforts for the uh, growth in the export market we'll come back and we will have uh, uh, you know growth in the export business also in the fund next financial year well yeah, so would you like to quantify that because even if a domestic market grows at 50% and we have 40% share from that so you know even can we at least grow at a minimum of 20% would that be a fair assumption like even considering that's the minimum you know that's the minimum we have uh, uh, considering that uh, at least there should be a growth of 20% in the export market in the next financial year that's the minimum target we have set for ourselves and we are working on that and we are confident that we can achieve that uh, growth so that's for export market and what about our indian market indian market is growing yeah, the indian market has already shown very positive and very good growth in this financial year in the nine months and this momentum will continue because the new products are, have been just launched they will definitely add to the revenue and definitely in the indian market our business will be much much uh, faster growth in the next uh, financial year okay thank you sir if i may add something to this uh, sir in the exports if you look at it uh, all these markets are our strong markets as mr modi rightly pointed out and it's just a matter of uh, a pent up demand which will actually come in the moment these restrictions of dollar ease up so we are it's a matter of uh, any time that if, if what we have seen is that once the country opens it gives us a pent up demand and they will open up one by one or they will open up together that is the only question and the moment it is there we we expect a huge pent up demand coming in from that quarter also for our export business and parallelly we are adding another uh, lot of new countries also and that will actually end up taking our export business to the next level also in terms of that Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pritesh from Lucky Investment. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, just a few questions. One uh, on the previous direct site, uh, you know, there are these products under dental material, which are fairly uh, exhaustive list. So these are all traded products for us. These are all manufactured. These are all manufactured products. So what on we see average. on the site under oral care, 3D resins, and dental material, all are manufactured by you. Yes. So yes. as of now, there is no product we are trading. All the products that are there on that product are manufactured by us. Okay. 
so i fail to understand one thing sir we are a 50 crore revenue company we have so many products and we have so many countries that we talk about there will be some pareto principle right yes so yes there is yeah so you know what is that pareto principle in sense uh, what are your top 2 export markets and contribution to your revenue and what are your top 5 products and contribution to your revenue so the best principle of ap20 applies in uh, actually it is applies across everything uh, so in our case uh, it's actually not ap20 it's likely uh, let's say the top 5 products would contribute to approximately uh, not top 5 But around top 20 products will contribute to around 40 percent of our business. That's something like that. Okay. And uh, export market? Uh, export market. Uh, again, we we'll have top export. two or three countries, right? Where you will be? Uh, uh, actually, uh, no. We are spread across the markets. It's not the top three. If it was top three, then the business which is happening right now also would have uh, this thing. Our business is spread across. And in the last call, we have given up a split of uh, uh, the global uh, percentage split also. If I remember correctly. So then, uh, in terms of which uh, market contributes to how much percentage of our business in exports? Okay. Yes. So then, I so as a strategy, you know, slightly longer term. uh yes. you know it's it's a smaller company with limited resources and limited bandwidth uh is it it uh, uh, you know more beneficial to focus your energies on let's say few continents let's say latin america and africa where the larger population is there and we do not have maybe mncs competing there you know create that type of a business in export instead of going around and having so many countries and you know so many small small insignificant businesses do you see it that way or the dental business is done the way you are doing today i will reply to this question actually our major revenue comes from 20 countries and rest of the uh, you know uh, 70 countries are just contributing a very small Portion, but we don't want to lose any business from anywhere because the countries which are uh, uh, not uh, giving us less business today, they have the potential to grow. But we can't leave the those countries. You know, if there is a demand for our products in these countries, uh, even small demand, so we are catering to these countries. But our major contribution uh, in the revenue is from the uh, 20 countries. You know. So we are focusing on mainly we are focusing on those twenty countries. Rest of the countries, they come on their own. You know, they join us, they give orders, they become dealers, we supply them. So this is how we are catering to ninety countries, and they are also contributing to our revenue. So we don't want to lose them, and we don't want to not to do business with them. So we continue our policy of uh, uh, providing supplies to all countries. Where there is a potential, where there is a requirement, where there is a dealer, but definitely we we'll focus on the developed countries and the countries where we see or see a better and bright future for our product. And here the business would be done based on the registration you would have done in those country, and you appointed the dealer or a distributor, and who will go ahead and sell the products in that country, right? Dealer yeah, we, we back to the policy we appoint a dealer, the dealer registers the product in his country, and then he continues to buy right. from us with the understanding that he will continue to grow and give us at least twenty percent growth every year. And in most of the cases, they are fulfilling their commitments, obligations of growth. But you know, we, as I said, that uh, the major 20 countries out of the 20 countries, four countries which were contributing maximum for our business uh, have uh, uh, you know foreign exchange crisis. So that's why the business from uh, export business has not grown. But if those countries were also performing in the the way they were doing earlier, we could have also seen the growth in the export in this financial year. Yeah. But now we see that the situation is changing, and we are sure that uh, they will come back, and uh, the foreign exchange crisis will be eased and uh, will become normal, and uh, we will get uh, good business from these four countries. So this is our. There is a strategy, and I think most of the dental companies are following the same strategy. 
Do you have to register your products in these countries, sir? Yes, yes. Okay. We have to register because all these countries, uh, you know, being health-related products, uh, every uh, country has got its own regulations and we have to comply with the registration process with all these uh, uh, in these countries. Okay. And my last question is, sir. Uh, Mr. Pritesh? Oradox, uh, sir, we are uh, unable to hear you, sir. Your uh, audio hello. was lost. Hello, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, please. Okay. Sir. So, on the Oradox side, which is uh, the OTC side of the product where you have uh, done your launches this year, I see those products in some of these uh, web portals, uh, apps, and all. Uh, what is the right to win for you in this OTC line? You know, you're going to compete against some of the some of the products are fairly new to the customer themselves, but, you know. And uh, what is the right to win there? How will you do a how will you generate business in this Oredox line of business? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so sir, uh, Oradox, if you would have seen the products and you would have seen it on various platforms, uh, these products we are, uh, the, when when we are looking at these products, these products are very innovative and most of them are first in India, okay? And many of them are currently not available in India, these kind of products. And hence, uh, the direct competition with the bigger players in this market, we are quoted or listing doesn't exist because these are very specialized products. Secondly, I already mentioned that when we are looking at launching this, one, an online consumer part is already there. The entire piece of the digital marketing and uh, entire piece of the performance marketing, that entire thing is already, we are uh, working on that and it will start from its own. Uh, this Second, from an offline point of view, we will en uh, engage with our dentist to the channel our partner who are already, we have a huge reach to these dentists. Through our team, through our uh, dealer network in India, which we have 60% dealer network there, and we are already reaching to them. And third, uh, the dental exhibitions and everything already will provide us a, another opportunity to uh, uh, launch this to dentists. So these are the three ways we are looking at uh, moving this to the end consumer, these products. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Asta Jain, Senior Research Analyst from M Securities for closing comments. Thank you, Zikum. On behalf of Hain Securities Limited, I thank Privis Dentro Limited team for giving the time we spend on this call and responding all the queries in the detailed way. I would also like to thank all the participants for joining this call. Now, I would like to hand it over to moderator again for the closing remarks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of AM Securities, that concludes this conference. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.